yeah. Okay. Right. Another question somebody asked, asked him about the Polo Ground record label and the J Love Entertainment Group and the barbershop. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so all of that was a um, a you know subsidiary of Andre Harrell. <laughs> okay. And it was because Andre Harrell that I was able to do that. But at the same time, it was Andre was the one stagnating me at the same time because Andre just wanted me to do marketing and promotion. And he was trying to get me to come back when Motown was in turmoil to come back and help him uplift the label because he knew that I could come back with the right music and get the ball rolling again immediately. Yeah. So I wouldn't. So I went on to create Pole Ground and J Love Entertainment. The J Love Entertainment was the management on Polo Ground was the label. And Polo Ground, we started at Uptown. That Andre had given me a label at Uptown. And it was Polo Ground. Okay. And named it Polo Ground. And Polo Ground was because it's Uptown Harlem. The Negro Leagues played there. If you do your history research, uh, the Ruckers is there. Okay. And that's what we were about. So I named my company Polo Ground. And so Polo Ground was that. And I named it after the projects too, because that's where the baseball field was there. So my logo was like a project sign. When you go uptown to the project, you see Polo Ground. It's a blue and orange. <laughs> Sign and shit. And so I called it that. And my first artist was on there was Anthony Hamilton. Okay. Yeah. And then I had a producer called George Pearson who produced all the uh, records with Poke and Tone, Trackmaster. Okay. Trackmaster, yeah. Uh, yeah, they produced so many records with them. And we actually produced the only hit that came out of Motown, which is Stilo from 702. Yes, yeah, so that was it. Yeah. So did, and then, mm -hmm. so I opened up a barbershop because I'm from uptown and that, you know, haircuts mean everything. Haircuts <laughs> are everything. And if you had a fucked up haircut, Andre would hate you for life. <laughs> he looked at your head and your head was fucked up. He was like, I hate that man. <laughs> and we always would talk about the kind of haircuts and everything was so I opened up a barber shop and I was I'm like a barber. I know how to cut. I hired people, I showed them how to do hair. I learned how to do hair, dye, all this kind of stuff before all these guys started putting all this Beijing in <laughs> their hair and dyeing their hair. I was learning how to do that 25 years ago. Wow. And uh, now all these guys got uh, dye in their skull. <laughs> <trying to, laughs> you, know, you know, they got a new style of haircut where you can give a guy a wig and cut some waves in their hair and they can have a, a hair piece for a day or two. <laughs> and, you know, and also, I opened the barbershop as a marketing arm okay. to bring the whole area that I was in was the, it was the film district. And so the, all the Broadway plays are around there, all the films, it was the film district and the music district. Yeah. So it was uh, Motown and Universal was in Worldwide Plaza. Okay. I lived in 350 Worldwide Plaza and my barbershop was at 729 uh, between 9th Avenue, 8th Avenue and 9th Avenue. And it was called J Love Spot. And I would shut down the whole block and give barbecues and free haircuts and, you know, for hospitals and everything like that. And everybody would come. Um, Hillary Clinton came to my shop wow. and got her hair done in front of a bunch of men. You know, um, Ty Tyra Banks, um, just everybody, like Mike Tyson, this, this person, every artist that you can name, every executive that you can name, every financial billionaire, everybody came to my shop. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Every designer, Tommy Hilfiger, this person, that person, Puff, everybody. So everybody, and I would, I'm one of the original guys that started, 
you know, you gotta pay, you gotta pay to look good, baby. I'm gonna make you look good. I'm gonna yeah. teach you how to steam your face, dye your hair, cut your hair right. It's gonna cost you $125. <laughs> and I started that expensive haircuts and also bringing people together just to talk in my shop. And I, and when you came in it, it was a whole history of music and Broadway and Hollywood in there. Mm. And it's not just a black shop, you know what I mean? I just, I wanted to make it a shop where yeah. black minds could come together and express. And, you know, there were films shot in there. A lot of people started barbershops as a result of doing that. A lot of, you know, like when you look at LeBron James, the shop, all uh, those concepts come from me. Yeah. And mm -hmm. and the thing about it though is I'm not trying to say anything bad because I, I love it. They don't they can't do it right because it's not authentic. Mm -hmm. And that's what what was special about my shop. Now the thing that would have taken my shop to another level is me selling products, not haircuts, products. Because the beauty business is a $30 billion, $40 billion business. It is not off of haircuts or anybody doing hair. It's off of products. Okay. So you got it. And you know, when you educate somebody, when you educate somebody, they learn and then they move on. They do the puff daddy. Yeah. <laughs> They go and open up three or four shops. But the thing about it is most people, they don't think you have to be in the right place. It doesn't matter if you go to Brooklyn, Queens, or the Bronx. Yeah. None of that shit is Manhattan. Yeah. None of that shit is in the heart <laughs> of the film business, the music business. That's where you want to be, or the financial business. But is it true that when you closed the shop that you broke everything that you could take with you? Absolutely not. I wish okay. I did. <laughs> okay. I would, I, I, you know, if I, if you would have told me that years ago, I would say I would have blown that motherfucker up because I didn't own that. <laughs> what, what, what's true is that it, what it taught me was don't ever do anything. You don't ever, uh, hello? Yeah, I'm here, yeah. Don't ever do rent anything or lease anything, own everything. You don't have no landlord telling you whether you could play loud music or not loud, or the people in your shop are talking too mm. loud because you live upstairs. Yeah, that's ridiculous. You gotta be an owner, a boss. If you don't own shit, you're not shit. You know, you, you're an employee. And was that the case in the uptown? Did you, because did you own, did you, who owned the masters of, of, of uh, um, with all the artists you signed? Was that MCA or did, did, did you well, guys I get? I owned stuff that I signed. I owned all the stuff that I signed, but I didn't own uh, any uptown masters. Andre owned that and okay. he sold it. He sold uh, it. Okay. Do you think the label could ever be revived? Because of the market. The label was being revived by a young man by the name of Steve Carlos, Stephen Carlos. And they gave him Uptown. And I hope that he could do a good job. I don't know what the future of the label is, but I think that uh, he's a pretty smart young man. Um, I've moved on from that, and like I said, I do film. Yeah. So I'm not sitting here trying to uh, suggest that I want to come back and do music again, because I really don't. Because I'm at another level right now, quite frankly. Yeah. What is it that we can expect from you? Because I know you mentioned you did the Defiant ones. Um, the, well, you could, really good. The uptown, you could expect the Uptown story, the real one. Okay. Will you do it as a biopic or of a documentary like the the fine one? I'm doing both. And a biopic. I mean, do, uh, excuse me, a biopic film and a, a documentary. Yeah, because I think the the fine ones was, um, you know, I, I, it was really 
it was really good at how that was done. You know, the, the sort of flashbacks, the sort of different perspectives, just watching the narratives of Dre and Jimmy from different perspectives. And um, in some sense, I actually enjoyed Jimmy's side because it was, you know, my dad had food with Mac and, and all that stuff. So it was like I could relate to listening to that stuff because I'd already known about the Dre stuff. So it was really interesting seeing his, where he came from and, and his thinking. Um, exactly. Yeah. And when you have all those elements, you 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 have to win. And then Alan Hughes, the best director in the world. Yeah. Um, and his, his brother is his one brothers. of the greatest directors in the world, too. And Menace to Society, was that not the... Menace, Dead Presidents. Yeah. American Pimp, From Hell with Johnny Depp, Book of Eli. You know, yeah, book of Eli, they, yeah. But but they I haven't think, done a lot of films, but when they do, yeah, boy, I mean, boy. yeah, Menace to Society was was like Boys in the Hood, that type of the big thing is what's up with the soundtrack, the movie soundtracks. We miss those type of things. Right. They're just coming back now. They're okay. just gonna start coming back now because I, something happened, you know, film guys they look down on music people. They they don't think that music people are, they think they're tacky. Okay. They think they're tacky, but, and I think film people sometimes are tacky in a different way, though. Yeah. But they're not going to come in and try to steal your publishing. And, <laughs> you know, they're not concerned with that because yeah. there's way, way, way more money involved. Yeah. So, are you, so, just for us to, to be able to look out for stuff. So you're saying you've got the uptown stuff, but anything in the immediate future that we should look, we could expect. Right now, Tupac, Feeney, Biodoc right now, coming on Hulu. Okay. Right now, directed by Alan Hughes. Uh, the story of Feeney, uh, Tupac's mother, and Tupac. Uh -huh. And it's not going to be focusing that much on the traditional stuff that has already been said. Yeah. Should not. It's that there's none of that's going to be focused on. It's going to be on how did Tupac began his journey to becoming who he eventually became. Yeah. And his mother's journey and how she inspired him to become who he eventually became. Yeah. And I think I think growing up knowing her her story, um, you know, an actor. Well, her story know. is incredible. Yeah, we know about all Black Lives Matter, but she was there back in the in the early days and, right. and, and inspired him and stuff. When 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 should we expect that to come out? That's coming out twenty twenty two. Okay, okay. Everything okay. we do takes a long time. <laughs> Unlike music, it takes longer with film and 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 stuff. Not music. Music, you can get something out in three months, and Right now, the way that these kids make music right now, you can get something out uh, the next day. And, and, and you know what I mean? You can yeah. get something. They're making records every month. They're putting out a single. It's not the same record business. This with Ford, When we put out records, it took us six months to prepare yeah. to release the record. We had to have a release date. We had to make sure the marketing was in place. You know, we had to make sure everything. None of that is important now. Yeah, I think there's the first, no, there's no this, street teams. There's no street teams. There's uh, no uh, promotional teams. A record company now, where you had a black music department, had at least a hundred people on staff. Wow. Two hundred. Now it's three people: <laughs> the A and R, one head of promotion, and that's that. And he goes nowhere. He emails somebody something. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's not in nobody. <laughs> Are you enjoying the, the, the slow pace of the film in this side, or do you miss the, the hustle and bustle of the music? This shit is not slow. It's not slow. You are you working and you on call 24 hours a day. You know what I mean? And it's like you gotta be on point. Yeah. So it's not slow. It's yeah. it's slow to put it out, maybe, but it's a daily fight. When you it's like music is it's war, really. Yeah. It's war. Like, you don't have to, you know, you working with Dr. Dre and Jimmy and, and Alan Hughes and 
there's demands. Yeah. Uh, the question I always ask all my guests before I, I wrap up is that if you were stuck in an elevator and, and they say, oh, it'll take about an hour or two to get before we get you out, but we can give a movie for you to watch while, you, while we're getting you out, what would you request to watch? The Godfather. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really, that's a classic one there. The Godfather. The Godfather. They're about to put on the movie, but they say, look, we'll put a play a song as we get the movie on. What, what song would you request to listen to? Uh, One Night Stand by Father MC and Teddy Riley. Okay. No, no, I thought that was... Um, I thought Teddy did the 69 and One Night was um, Eddie. It might have been Eddie. I thought Teddy, <laughs> I thought Teddy did one. <laughs> it might have been Eddie. Yeah, I know but, Eddie. We, <laughs> okay, because I know Eddie. But I definitely want to thank you. Somebody asked how come Andre didn't put out his mind was. Like an he, was in the, he was in the process of doing that. Oh, he was? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, it's funny. You know, I, Andre was like, yo, you know, I'm putting that out. And I said, yeah. And he's like, yeah, you should start getting yours together. And I was like, I, I'm not in a rush. And he was like, why not? And I said, I'm going to live forever. That's why. <laughs> and he thought that was funny because I would say things like that all the time. And that's, that's one of the reasons why he loved me because I would say those kind of things. And he mm -hmm. thought that was the funniest thing in the world. And every time Andre seen me, and we seen each other. We both had a big smile on our face. We was happy. And regardless yeah. of the business or anything, yeah. it always, at that night, regardless if we had a real bad fight in the daytime that night, it was like, where are we going to dinner? All right, yeah. what are we going to do? And anybody that knows anything about Uptown and Andre and myself know that we were connected by the hip. Yeah. And, and um, I miss him. And, you know, there's nobody like him, ever. And I used to always say when we were experiencing different things that, damn, we're never going to see this again. We're never going to see this again. Like, yeah. certain times we'd be at the Hamptons and Mary would be performing and <laughs> it would be a Puff Daddy, Jay-Z party. And people would be, you see Bruce Willis, you see Sally Fields, you see you know, uh, Buster Rhymes. The, this cat, that cat, this, that, and, you know, things would occur and you're like, this is never going to happen again. And, wow. and the celebration, Uptown was built on and represented celebrating in yeah. the party. That's what the whole business model was based on, partying, yeah. you know, and it's never going, for us, for me, yeah. never going to happen again like that. Yeah, no, I think it, it's it's a character of the man that after letting Puffy go, that he could actually go back and work with him. Um, that 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 to me was a, a man who had integrity and 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 humility and 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 just he just felt like he was look going after look look after when he went to went back when he went and met, right. met up with Puffy. I was it it was it was a character of a man that he could do that um you know that's that's and, and he was happy to, and he was happy to do that because i'm gonna tell you something else without andre he's the glue that connected everybody hello yeah yeah i'm here yeah, yeah he's the glue that connected everybody and puffy russell or anybody they wouldn't have the same connection if it wasn't for Andre mm. and I know that for a fact that every person that Puff knows Andre had something to do with putting them together yeah yeah well wow. but I, I definitely appreciate that Jimmy um, this this opportunity this history lessons and stuff and um, and I know we'll definitely be looking for because if it's anything like the defined ones which was a a remarkable piece of, um, of, of, of of movie making, you know, it was really, really in depth story. I mean, I think I don't think people have done it that way, that type of stuff. So, 
if there's anything like that we're going to expect with the Athena stuff or, or uh, and the Uptown stuff <coughs> that you're putting together, we're definitely going to be in for a treat and stuff. But yes, uh, yeah, definitely appreciate the time and stuff. We've you know got so much stuff. I mean, yeah, they, you know all these questions that everyone asks and stuff. Um, <laughs> are, are you still with Anti Hamter? I know he's has as he been released from your label your, your label deal or. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, um, you know, uh, he's moved on and, you know, he's doing his thing. But, you know, I'm I'm cool with him. I, everything is groovy. I mean, you know, every, from from Anthony, it just allowed me to get bigger. You know, and he moved on and to do other things. And, you know, he's been successful at it. And I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's... um. No, it's just, it's just good that so many people are very familiar with you. I mean, they, they, they as I said, I didn't know about uh, the barbershop, but yeah, you, you have people who are like actually. They love Spot. They love Spot. I, I was getting ready to send you a picture of me so you could post that. As yeah. My picture. No, you know, but I'm gonna need it because you know when I when I put this out on YouTube and stuff, I, I use different pictures to sell different. You know, I break it into like 15, 20 minute segments. So I'm gonna need different type of pictures. So definitely that will be helpful. Yeah. So this is. I'll send you a couple. Yeah, that will be great. But I really, it's about it's midnight here, so right. <laughs> I'm gonna go to sleep. I appreciate it. All right. Yeah. Thanks a lot, though. All right. Thanks. All right.